Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom, everybody! Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom, Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shabbat Shalom, 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 Shabb
Tour talk time. This is I see a couple new people again. So a just quick rundown. This is a this is a um, a show that we've been doing for over two years. Um, that we started in Colorado, uh, January 2017, and um, and we have restarted the episodes here live in the land. That's why it says live in Israel. Uh, we uh, we do Bible study. Uh, like a panel where you guys bring us the questions that we get into. We don't come with any preset kind of topic or, or discussion. Sometimes we'll kick it off with a topic, but um, it's we're here for you guys, for you to ask the questions uh, that you know maybe you're not you don't have somebody to ask to, or you can't get to your pastor to talk to, or you don't have anybody around like-minded or uh, a congregation to be a part of. So this gives you the opportunity to be a part of the extension of our table, as we like to call it. And uh, so welcome to Torah Talk Time. I'm Paul and Michelle Roy of Shmal Yisrael 7 Ministry. Also, Anthony and Angela Avalos. You're Paul and Michelle, <laughs> I am. I'm Paul and Michelle because we are a hut. So I'm, I'm me and her, and her and me, and hers, me, and, and yeah. Anyway, so uh, this is Shmal Yisrael 7 Ministry, both here and in Colorado. Uh, and... Um, and this is Tor Talk Time. So welcome, and we're going to blow the shofars and sing the Shema, and then uh, get into uh, whatever. Amen? Amen. All right. One, two. <laughs> Israel's going to ban us from blowing the shofars. <laughs> no. No, they're not. We already have a really, really good first hour. That's right. Oh, so Two to four, and we're <laughs> way past four, so. Way past four. We already have a question. Wow, Nick ain't missing a beat, man. He's on it. <laughs> wow. Wait, where? Oh, we didn't sing this wrong. Oh. Also, didn't we have something for last week that we were going to come nope. back to? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. If anybody remembers a question from last week that we were supposed to come back to, uh, can you remind us? I kind of feel like there was something. Robin? That's what I was thinking. Is that Robin? Uh, Maybe I'm thinking of a No, we weeks. got his last week. There's somebody else. I don't know. Lauren Gaglier is watching. Wow, we got like five new people on here tonight. Very cool. Andre says <laughs> my speaker just exploded because. Of your shofar blowing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not true. Well, if it has to explode, I guess that's the best way to do it. <laughs> right. right. I hope not. He might be trying to send us a bill. Yeah. All right. Let's sing the shofar. Oh, Taylor says she blew her shofar with us. That's, that's cool. Sweet. I love that. I love that's that. That's awesome. <laughs> Ready? Yep. <clears throat> We're going to sing the shofar. Ready? Bye. Shmai Yisrael, Yehovah, Eloheinu, Yehovah.
Pretty All right, so Barcelona. Next question. Um, how could I make a living in the land if not too personal? Yeah, too personal, dude. No, I'm just kidding. How do y'all provide? I know faith in his provision is key. Uh, you, you answered your own question. <laughs> There's multiple ways. Um, one way that we don't necessarily recommend, unless it's y'all putting it on you, is conversion. Um, as long as they don't yeah, ask you, that on yeah. You. As long as they don't ask you if you believe in Messiah, you should probably make it through. I mean, we do believe in a form of Judaism. We just are Messianic Judaism. No. <laughs> so well, don't put no. Well, yeah, we are. I mean, but, well, we don't do Talmud. We don't. Oh, we don't do Talmud. <laughs> the Talmud. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Not Messianic Studios. Sort of. Because that's a whole nother can of worms. Okay, well, we don't want to put titles on it because then people think they understand right. what we're about. Right. It's, you it's, hear it's, our Israeli kitties? Quiet. Is he, is he asking where we get money from? Is that what he's asking? No, he's asking well, he's how just, we can live in the land. How we can live in the land. You yeah. can live in the land. Yeah. Go for Alia, you can go for a residency. Um, well, yeah, there's money. permanent residency, there's temporary residency, there's work visas, there's different things like that. But the first things first, though, Nick, is y'all calling you to be here and then y'all getting you prepared. A lot of times the problem is, and I've seen this unfortunately happen a lot of times, or not a lot, but we've seen this happen with people, is we always see y'all in a pattern throughout Scripture come and tell people, I'm going to do this with you. Problem is that some people take off run and think that's immediate thing that they're supposed to go do. But that's not what Yah says. It's like King David. He anointed King as as he anointed David as king, but David didn't become king for 20 more years. He told Abram that he would have a son, and that through his son he would be would be a covenant promise, and through and through his descendants would be Israel and the father of many nations. But that didn't have for, happen for 13 years, you know, and, and different things throughout. I mean, Yah told Avraham that that Israel would would go into captivity for 400 some years. That didn't happen for way down the road because of what had to go about to deliver Israel, bring them into the wilderness, and make that marriage covenant at Mount Sinai. So, and I can go on and on and on. There's multiple things. The thing of it is, is there's always three things that pertain to this kind of stuff. First, Yah gives you the desire. He plants that seed of desire at, for the land. The second thing is, is Yah will, will give you the scripture and, and or witness that it's from him in a way that you'll know it's from Yah. And then the third thing is the means. Yah always provides the means. And so in us... It all worked the same way. Um, you know, for my wife and I, we went to Israel. We went. We lived in Tiberias on the north end of Israel in 09. And, um, you know, we got a taste of it. And for the last 10 years, it's been preparation to come back. For Anthony and Angela, when they came to our congregation five years ago, little did they know it was preparation to bring them with us. And, you know, so if you're feeling a desire, you're feeling a drawing to be here, the first thing is, is, okay, Father, if this is from you, show me. Tell me that this is from you. And second, start making me ready. Because I promise you, you do not want to be entering the land if you are not spiritually prepared to be in this land. Because even those who are spiritually ready to be in this land have a fight on their hands. Because this is the epicenter of everything. This is the front lines. This is this is where it all starts. This is where it all ends. This is where Satan and the biggest biggest demons are fighting against the, the most powerful angels on a constant basis against the place where the name of Yehovah sits and is written in the mountains. And so, um, you know, so don't be in a rush. I know that desire and ache, I, I, there's many brothers and sisters that we talk with that want to be here so bad, and we tell them all the same thing. Just let Yah open the doors, let him lead you, because if he does, everything's going to fall into place.
everything will happen smoothly and everything will be done the way Yah wants it to be done. And during that time frame, what you've got to do is let Yah mold you, disciple you, and prepare you by building you and strengthening you spiritually, getting rid of your old self in every way, and, and becoming refined so that when you get here, you don't get eaten up alive and spit out of the land like we've seen happen to, to people who came here before it was time. So anybody want to add to that or anything? I think you're specifically asking how we provide, like, like as far as, like, provisions-wise. For us specifically or for it, That's or why you said it, it's not too personal. But, I mean, we don't have to share that. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, one of the things that Anthony and I are thinking about doing um, after the spring feast is, um, you know, already then. Um, That's why she was saying hello, hello. hello There's a strange cat in the yard. <laughs> we have Israeli kitties in our yard that we feed that keep coming back, and sometimes the other cats will try and come in. <laughs> what was I saying? After the spring feast, you want to do Yeah, we're thinking about starting a paint company out here because from what everybody's telling us, they are in good need of painters here where we live. So, or they're in need of good painters. All I can say is everybody's different. And um, Yah provides no matter what, and we're yes. here for full time ministry, yes. and so Yah provides through um, multiple means. So I just put it. That and way. we have a lot of irons in the fire as well that we're working on, um, yeah. because it says that if you don't work, you don't eat. And so we're working. We will be working in different ways, and um, also not including, and also including to further the kingdom. That's mm -hmm. also concerned with. So. Um, but he's been taking care of us. He's been providing. Um, you know, he allowed us to put a good lump sum away yeah. before we got here too. So that definitely helped. And um, we'll be looking at different means of keeping that going for ourselves. So, but for right now, we're good. <laughs> so, guys, we serve an awesome, awesome meal. Right. right. This one also goes to mind. Yep. Yeah. But when we first got together, his mom gave me a little sail ship. Um, I like ships and stuff like the ocean. And so she got me a little sail ship, and on it said, The will of God will never lead you, or the grace of God cannot keep you. And right. I kept that thing with me for years and years. And I actually accidentally left it on the bookshelf because I was going to wrap it up. So she'll send it to me. But um, yeah, I live by that. This is true. He won't lead, lead you where he's not going to keep you. That's right. So. That's exactly right. You know, and people, you know, part of, you know, one one I can share is um, some of our provisions is because people donate to the ministry yeah. and, and help because they believe in what the ministry is doing so that we can do the stuff that we're doing, like the videos and traveling around and stuff like that. Um, that is a part of it. And we also recently just started a GoFundMe page for us to get a van. That will definitely help us save a lot of money with our budgeting. It's right. been kind of costly traveling around with eight people trying to get to a different with buses site and taxis, yeah. to make videos, study the word out. We, we take it to the site and we make the videos. We come back. It, it's, it's getting costly. So if we had a van, then we'd be able to uh, travel yeah, around with that, that cost tremendously. So, so um, yeah, we're, we're doing that yeah too. we're doing stuff like that. We we didn't actually have that in mind when we came out here, but we felt like y'all really led us to go ahead and give us the green light on that. So, yeah. but we are working to support ourselves as well. So it's not like you know yeah we're not looking to move to or no, no. live up or whatever. I like the way Anthony put it. Our focus for the ministry is not uh, monetarily progressive. It's not. That's not what we're about. Those are fancy words. Fancy words. We're, we're, we're not in it for the money. That's, not that's for money. sure. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> so, yeah. hope that answers your question, Nick. <laughs> I see the next question right. is Robin. Dakota. 
Oh, you missed Dakota Cassidy. Dakota, where is Oh, I guess Roblin is first. I'm after Dakota. Responded. Okay. Responded. All right, due to Sonny's, what? Okay. Due to Sonny's death, this is um, a man that Roblin <laughs> knows. Um, this man was uh, had some health problems. Correct me if I'm missing any of this up. Um, and um, a couple buddies of his stopped by and shot him up with uh, meth because uh, he used to do drugs and um, he went to a coma and they left him and he died. It wasn't meth. It was uh, uh, um, I think fentanyl. Fentanyl. Well, it was something it was that methamphetamine. That's, that's not what I read. I thought it was a drug. The nurses gave him a drug. No, and two he, buddies gave him a drug. Yeah, it was the nurse. And they well, gave him. That's not what I have in my PM unless I read it wrong. Well, maybe I read it wrong. But, anyways, one way or another, I thought it was a nurse. Something happened, it went bad. And and it, 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 he they died. left him for me at the night. Yeah, and he passed away. That was the nurse. Okay, but it, so anyway. Okay, sorry, Roblin, maybe you can help us. Can you clear it up? Because I thought it was something else. So he said, is it possible for our soul to be saved, but our life found to be a waste? Meaning, will we be held to account if we never bring someone to faith? Roblin, brother, the first thing I would say, cry, <laughs> we, we, we don't ever save anybody. It's, we don't ever save anybody. We're, we're not, even if you get the privilege of seeing somebody through witnessing to them and they say, yes, I want, I want to receive Yeshua as Messiah and stuff, and they want to repent and ask for forgiveness, we didn't do that. That person was just ready by Yah at that moment to receive what you had to say, and you were the tool to say it. But... If you're walking out your life in Yah, if you are being a witness in everything that you do, people are going to see Yah, people are going to come to Yah, and more often than not, we don't ever know about it. There's times I've had people contact me, I had no idea that they have been following our ministry for two or three years and tell me, this message was it, this finally got me. I don't want to live the way I'm living. I've been watching your teachings for two years or three years, had no clue. And everything of what we were doing is stuff. And, and so it's the same thing in your everyday walk. Everybody that you interact with, Robin, everybody that sees the way you handle things, the way you deal with stuff is a witness to people on a constant basis. And you never know when you've touched somebody's life and it has affected them, it has helped them, it has changed them. Yah's not expecting us to save anybody because we can't. We do our due diligence so that they can be saved by Him. We go and tell them about Him. He moves on their hearts. Like Scripture says, no one can come unto the Father unless led by the Holy Spirit. No one. Can declare that Yeshua is Adonai unless led by the Holy Spirit, unless drawn by Him. So understand that, you know, we don't know what happens. You know, there are times that I, I believe some people can have a moment of clarity where everybody else thinks that person is gone. And we don't know what's going on in their final thoughts before they pass away. Yah is in control of the whole thing. Don't let the enemy beat you up and think that you failed this man or that you failed and that you're going to be held accountable for him. If you witnessed to this man and you tried to help him, you did what you were supposed to do. It is not on your shoulders. His sin is on his own head and so is his blood because you did what you were supposed to do to try to help him be reached about salvation. If you're feeling conviction about maybe you should have spoke up at this point or that point, um, then just take that as a lesson. You know what I mean? Because I had that with I had that with my dad, I had that with my sister, I had that with 
you know, people that, that had passed away, why didn't I say this at this time? Or why didn't I do this? Or I had a regret. I think that's natural um, for all of us to feel that way because for one, you're, you're shocked that they're gone for the most part. Um, but don't let, don't let the enemy beat you up thinking that, you know, you were supposed to do more. I feel like if, if you really were supposed to, then you probably did what you were, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I, I don't want to, I don't want to offend anybody, but, you know. Offend who? <laughs> offend who? Sometimes, sometimes we're supposed to make mistakes, you know what I mean? And, and we learn from them and they're learning lessons for the next experience. So if you are feeling that heavy that you should have said more, then you'll know next time, you know what I mean? To say more if the situation comes up again. Or maybe it's just the enemy trying to make you feel bad. Yeah, it's just if you witnessed to this man and you were trying, that's all that matters, Robin. Uh, T. Lynn's got a question. There was a question when somebody said something about Dakota. Oh, there I didn't see the word question. Okay, Julie Saucier, did you guys see that question? That was like the first one. Like the first question. Who? Julie you know Saucier. I don't know. Stewart. No, she's new. Saucier. I've never seen her. Nice to have you, Julie. I'm glad you're with us. Hopefully you're still with us. Uh we didn't get our question. She first said she first oh, said oh, one question, y'all are living in Israel. Then she went lower and said, yeah, Are y'all loving it? Will y'all give me some info on how and why you guys moved to Israel? Yes, we love Israel. We guess we're living in Israel. And um, I will tag you. We are, are, I'll, are. I can put in the comment section a link to um, our video that we made. It explains everything. Yeah, because um, we're here for ministry. We're here full time in ministry. Um, but we made it. We made a. Um, what do you call it? We made a video describe, just explaining everything of what we're, what, what Yaz brought us here to do. And uh, so, yeah, Michelle can tag you in that, and and then it'll give you everything you're looking for. Somebody remind me to do that. Okay, don't forget to do that. Don't forget to do that. Wow. Really? T. Lynn, what was the first type of leavened bread did you all no, want first? Yes. We haven't, it's not, Shabbat's not over, so we can't do nothing, but we want pizza or a cheeseburger, or a cheeseburger. You skipped to Cody's question. Oh, okay. Is Yeshua the most high? Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah, Yeshua. Yeshua, they're meaning Yeshua. Yeah, yeah. They're sitting here, Or just. It's just a different, yeah, or a time of the sorry. If you mean the most high is in the creator, Yes, we believe that Yeshua is the creator, came down to die for his bride, that we were always his bride. But we, we don't believe that Yeshua is the Father. The Father is on the throne. Father's always been there. Father so it depends on what you mean Father gave him. everything to Yeshua as an inheritance. Right. And gave Yeshua the authority to come and be God of all the earth and everything. And then as Paul talks about in first or second Corinthians, I think by um, it's in one of Paul's writings that when everything is done, that the son will subjugate himself and hand everything back unto the father and um, have hand all authority back to the father. I'm giving it to you in a really short nutshell. Also in Isaiah 54, it talks about your husband is your maker. Yes. And so we know that the, the maker is the creator. and He's the one who came. He's the one we're married to. He's the one who came and died. For the, us to take to take our penalty because we were the adulterous bride. Only the husband can die for the bride to remove that sin. Right. Couldn't be the father married to Israel and then and then given yeah. his ex-wife to his son. Can't do that. That's right, against to Torah. Torah. <laughs> so that means so all along it had to be Yeshua. Yeshua married Israel at Mount Sinai. Yeshua divorced her for her adultery. And then Yeshua paid the price to deliver her and wash her clean so that he could restore her back unto himself because also in like Deuteronomy 24 and Romans 7 um, that once a woman has been divorced by her husband and she goes and makes a covenant with another the first husband cannot take her back because that's uh, profaning and an abomination uh, before Yehovah so he can't break his own Torah so the only way was that her covenant ended 
uh, and scripture teaches that she, Israel went and made a covenant with another after Yah gave her a certificate of divorce. So she went and made a covenant with another, so Yah couldn't take her back, except Romans 7, it says that the first husband has to die, and after the first husband dies, then she is released of, from that being first an covenant. Of being an adulteress. She's, yeah, she's released from being an adulterer, and she's released from the first covenant. Mm -hmm. So by Yeshua, Yehovah Yeshua coming and dying, that released her from the first covenant with him so, he so that it. he could renew her and clean her by his blood, therefore restoring her back unto himself as the bride when he returns. And renewing maybe. Yeah, and, and making also, it all. Also finished. in Revelation it talks, uh, in, in our translations it'll say, uh, lowercase Lord, that Yeshua will be the one returning when he returns. Um, on the Mount of Olives, and he steps on the Mount of Olives, so and correct, that, right. that, that the Lord will blow the shofar. Well, if you look at that, we found Hebrew, um, little bits of Hebrew um, in the Re in Revelation, that's in the Revelation, it's Hebrew text, and it actually says, yod heh vav -Hey is the one who returns, steps his foot down on the Mount of Olives. And You're mixing two scriptures. In no, no, I'm saying that those two things, those two scriptures are both yod heh vav -Hey, where it says right. that the blowing of the shofar, and also, and I'm, maybe I need to clear that, also the stepping on the Mount of Olives. It says that um, those are both yod heh vav -Hey, but we know in our scriptures it says Yeshua, because they're one and the same. Right, Revelation 1.8, um, in the Hebrew, they have found some Hebrew uh, pieces, and verse 8 says, um, I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I, Yehovah, is what it says. And then, as my wife was saying, Zechariah 14, it says when it says that Yehovah will step down on the Mount of Olives and it will split. So showing all along, because Yeshua said, I've come in my father's name. Right. Father's name is Yehovah. Right. Yeshua came in his father's name. That's right. why he is Yehovah Yeshua. And during creation, it said, let us make man in our image. It was right. the Father and the Son together. And in the first verse of Genesis, it says the word bara, um, which means son. This, in the beginning, the son created, if you look at it from the Hebrew, because the word bar is bara, Aramaic. Bara. Bara. Yeah, and the, the word bar, bar, in bar it. Yeah. is the word son. And what's cool <laughs> is that same word bar, You'll also find in um, Daniel chapter 10, I think it's verse 13, but I know it's in chapter 10, where uh, Nebuchadnezzar says, didn't we throw three in the furnace? Then who is the one that looks like the sons of the God, or son of the gods? And that word son there is also bar. So, all right, so let's see. What's the next question? Do you know? Kathy Williams. Dakota says, I agree with you. Well, so are you saying Yeshua? Yes, Yeshua. Yeah. Question Is there anything that you. What? I was just going to say. Is there anything that you have changed or are doing differently since moving to the land? Like Michelle says, she is not wearing her ZT out. Anything else? Has anything surprised you? What a question. Um, well, are we doing why are you not wearing ZTs? I'm not exposing my ZTs. Oh, yeah, she, they still wear their ZTs. Just... No, she said out. I'm not wearing them out, like out of my parents. Oh, okay. I, I was thinking out of the house. I had told them before we left, or was it right after we got here, that I felt led to not have my, my, my ZTs on the outside of my parents. It would so, have a complete blow up. And plus, scripture doesn't require it's you not, it's to have not, them showing That's anyways. right. It's not a requirement, number one. I'm kind of outwardly picky by it, number two. It's not for anybody else other than me. Right. And I feel convicted to keep it between me and God while we're in this place and anywhere I go, actually. Right. And so um, it's my own conviction. Um, not, I'm not saying it's, it's wrong to have them out. I'm not saying it, it's definitely not wrong to have them on or to even put them inside because I know we know people who wear them on inside in the states on a regular yeah, basis. Yeah, our elder Robert showing. wears his on the inside. He never has his showing because he realizes he they're not for anybody but him. They're not for anybody but him. Yeah. Between him and Yah. So I don't know. Did you guys are you guys doing anything, anything differently? 
Because it's right there. Okay. Um, for myself, I've, I've I've previously used to wear my Z seats on my belt loops, um, and uh, we've kind of got, we've, for I mean this is not really for any particular reason except that I just like this way mm -hmm. better personally. So we found Brother Paul and I found a shop where you can actually get. Uh, katans to lead katans specifically for and it's, a, and it's an actual garment made specifically for ZC so instead of having to you know bother with not that it's a bother but instead of having to go through putting the loop in and my belt loop and them falling out and that kind of stuff um, I have a to lead katan that I have woven myself through and we've woven our, our own ZTs through ourselves. I thought you were the, gonna say you woke the through katan. the through the actual <laughs> holes in the katan that are made for the Z seats. And so literally all we gotta do when we get up in the morning is throw over our katan, put our shirt on over it, and our Z seats are, are on us all day long. And so I really like that. i that's kind of a, a small change that I've made. Uh, I, I really enjoy wearing my Khalid Katan. That's kind of I cool. love the Khalid Tilly Katan. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I didn't start wearing one years ago. It's probably a lot easier. I, 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 all your oh things. man, yeah. it's right. And like Michelle was saying, like I have Z seats attached to uh, a few of my scarves and that I carry around with me just just because it's just what I do. Yeah, <laughs> my personal scarves. Um, but here in the land, um, everyone who's wearing Z seat, their Z seat are just white. They don't have the blue thread and these guys wear them all the time, so they're constantly getting the, the stares and the, the, the confusion, like the look of like, what is this? Right. So no, they're, they're them, and the blue thread. And yeah. the blue thread. And, and, blue thread. And, and if I'm out with Michelle, I, I just don't ever want to give anyone an opportunity to um, come up to us and question us on why we're wearing ZT, because none of the women here do. Um, so I just, like Michelle said, I kind of felt that way even when we're in the States, um, just making it between me and y'all, because really that's why we wear them. It's it's a reminder. We, we look, When we are wearing them, it's to remind us. And so having them out, that's great. I mean, I used to wear them out. I, I go back and forth, but I haven't worn mine here in the land, like out, you know, on my jeans or my skirt or whatever. So um, and then anything else? Uh, has anything else surprised you? I saw oh, one, I saw one guy here. I thought it was really cool. It was like a, a happy accident. Oh, I, I, I'm not I'm gonna say the road. No, no, no. no. I don't say. <laughs> um, um, but we saw one guy. Um, he had his seat hanging on the back of his pants. He tucked his hands in and it had a blue thread in it. And we were like, oh. and so right. we know that there's a lot of people who <laughs> there's a lot of people who don't necessarily share it. <laughs> <laughs> So there's just there it's we just need to be a light. We just need to be a light and hopefully more people will come out and just realize they don't need to be bullied. If God has them here, then they just need to trust that God will keep them where he led them. So because I mean people can they the people are afraid of actually losing their audio. Yeah. Unfortunately. What, what question is, can you show me your seat seats? Uh, Nick Church says, where, where is the scripture on this? How is it supposed to be worn, seen or not seen, does it matter? It's Numbers 15, verses 37 through 41. That's, there's two places, but that's the key one. Yeah, Deuteronomy 12, I think it is. But um, uh, Numbers 15, 17 through 41. I mean, 37 to 41, those are the key verses about it, that it must have a blue thread. Um, doesn't say whether they need to be seen or not. It just says that they're to be on the four corners of your uh, garment. And, it doesn't um, say how it's supposed to look like wrapped or not wrapped. How many right, it's just, it's a certain wrap. it just, you could tie it in a knot for all that matters as long as you have a blue thread. It doesn't say they even have a white thread. That's just what's become uh, uh, practice. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. You could just do straight blue. You can make yourself a pair of blue seat seats. All it says is a blue thread. So. So I've got a lot of seat seats. Here's just a few of mine. <clears throat> and you don't have to have any specific tie. 
or any specific color. Um, it just depends on, you know, whatever you, a friend of mine made these ones for me in Kentucky, but this has all like different kinds. These ones are really old, so they're really frayed at the bottom. But this is the kind that I would normally make for the guys or for my husband. And then these ones, these are my most common ones that I wear. They're kind of coming out at the bottom. But I don't do any specific. It's just what I feel like doing. <laughs> it's you're not called to tie it in a certain way. You're not. It's just supposed to be knotted. I think it, it actually says knotted, right? Yeah. It, so, doesn't, no, it doesn't. Say does it say knot? Does it say knot? Does it say anything? Maybe I just confused that argument. What's it say? It just says you have to have a blue thread, and it has to be on the corners of your garment. That's all it says. It doesn't say that. Oh, it doesn't right. say doesn't no say knots, no ties, braids. It doesn't say white. I mean, you kind of hook it up with I don't, know, I don't know how else you're going to get it on there without tying it off, but. Well, right. I think maybe that's what we were confused about. I mean, it, technically, it doesn't say tie it off. Right. Do you get a scripture? Yeah, I typed it in. Cool. I'm going to not. Did you find the Deuteronomy one, too? So I want to go back to um, what was the gentleman? Or the person was I'm a not Jackie. Is she is you sure the most high? Who, who asked that? Uh, Dakota. I'm getting ready to send. I'm gonna go back to that question briefly, um, just because it is a really, really big subject to discuss. And Paul and Michelle covered it beautifully. I wanted to add a little bit um to what they were saying so uh we we do believe that the way that the scriptures are written it, it does indicate that yeshua is uh the most high now when that when that's speaking of i think it's in terms of of all creation of heaven and earth as far as we know that there's um a hierarchy within the realm of the angels uh, for example um michael the archangel is basically the the, the chief Prince and the chief angel, um, you know, oh, Daniel twelve. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you know, so as far as as far as all the angels, all the all creation, he created it all. It was all for him. It's all his inheritance, and so he he is the he is the most high in that sense. But like Michelle says, he's he's not the father. The father and him are separate. They're a chad in the sense of a unit. And the spirit, I love the way Paul worded it the other day, the spirit that connects them is the raw Kakadesh. It's the Holy Spirit that unites them. Yep. Um, and one one cool theme I like to share with you is is how all throughout the Torah and the Tanakh, it talks about Yehovah being the one to come riding on the clouds. And then Yeshua literally makes that declaration in the Brit Hadashah that the Son of Man will be the one to come on the clouds and come riding on the clouds. And so that that's because they're they're one and the same. Yah is Yeshua. Yeshua is Yah. He is the one that will return, as it says in Zechariah 14, and the Mount of Olives will split. He's the one that we will see riding on the clouds to meet the saints in the air and all of these things. And it actually says in Zechariah 14 that he will come with his saints yeah. and blow the shofar and also Dakota. Um, I shared the series of the greatest truth never told. Um, I shared the series with you just now to your PM, so you can check it out at your leisure. Uh, there's over 600 Bible verses that speak for himself. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So Deuteronomy 33, 26, there is no one like the El of Jeshurun who rides the heavens to help you and his excellency on the clouds. That's funny. See, he calls it. Okay. Psalm 68 4. You're done. <laughs> yeah, right. Psalm 68 4. Sing to Elohim, sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. Let's see. And then I'm going to go down to Revelation 14, it says, Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud, one like the Son of Man, having on his head 
a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And then this is where Yeshua declares basically that he is going to be the one returning on the clouds. In Matthew 26, 64, Yeshua said to them, it is, as you, it is as you said. Nevertheless, I say to you, who are hereafter, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Amen. Yeshua is Yahweh. Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. He is our Redeemer. He is our Rock. He is the El of our salvation. So, I'm going to throw that out there. Kathy Williams has another question. Do a lot of women wear head coverings? Do you feel like you should, or all, is all good? You both have such beautiful hair. As far I mean, not every single person, but for Kathy the has gorgeous hair too. Right, she's got really she really good. does. You do have beautiful hair. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, a lot of women do wear head coverings. Um, I, we're probably a few of the women here who don't, I and mean, there's well, people there's, here who, who there's don't. a lot of secular women right. you see that don't like right religious Most, women. The really the ones religious that are religious. I, I would say it's probably religious. two thirds. Right. Two thirds religious, one third non religious. I don't right. know. There's a lot of young people too that are right. religious. So right. it depends on the age group you're looking at. I think as well. And it depends on where you go. <laughs> Definitely. Um, when we're on the bus, it's almost always really people. Right. It depends on where you go and where you're at. Um, well, because the town we're in too, it's it's over 50% is Hasidic Jews. And then, Jews. Or Orthodox Jews. Or Orthodox. Um, but even, even the, the ones probably that... Probably about 25% is non-religious. The ones that don't dress their kids up like little baby rabbis. I don't know what those are like. Those are the it's a good way. So the ones that are walking around in like all black, they they still have the kippah and the side curl. Right? Are the they're orthodox, but even their women still wrap their head. And, but the girls don't. The younger right. girls, and they're not wearing the wigs. The younger right. girls of that set. So we're still trying to figure. It's I, we keep, we're not just walking up to these people, man. Okay, so what sect are you? Like, what yeah. what do you believe in? We just yeah, so because for the most part they won't speak this. It's gonna, <laughs> so. it's gonna. Well, they're not as bad as it depends. The Hasidics won't speak. They won't no. speak to us at all. They won't. We'll, we'll say smile. shalom. Michelle will try to give a piece of candy. I try to give a piece of candy to, to a, little boy. a little boy. The rabbi shook his finger. <laughs> <laughs> he said no, <"Nope." laughs> and I was like, well, okay, we're gonna try. But we just keep trying. A woman almost fell on a bus, and I reached out to to catch her and. I ended up touching her and she just completely. She about to crawl out of her skin. No, she just, it no, didn't. She I ran over to take a shower. No, <laughs> that was the guy yeah, in the box. Clean, go ahead and touch me. The box with the dish soap that fell out. Yeah, like, oh, he was, yeah, he yeah. was just. No, so, and it's we're fine. Though. We're, yeah. we're to be light and we're yep. going to still smile and we're still going to show love and we pray that when we walk around that people. So, what, well, see, the biggest thing about here is our actions more than words. So the woman on the bus, she she fell. She didn't acknowledge me. But there was uh, the same set at another bus stop, and my daughter was like, "Here, we're talking." There was like a stray dog, and she, I could see her dilemma. Like she she cared enough about Brianna not right. going up. She's like, "No cat, no cat," and which means no dog. And we're looking, and and I kept telling Brianna, she's saying it's not a dog, and then she kept saying, "Fuck." Uh, Fox. fox or yeah, something. I think Brand's like, that's not a fox, that's a dog. But I think it is a type of, but she actually started talking right. and she just kind of let her guard down. Oh, well, and there so, was three women and they all kind of, you know, and that's, and so that's we're really going to, we're going to break through because God wants us right. to break through. Yeah. And the others we're going to keep in prayer. It's, yeah, it's a form of, of bigotry. It doesn't need to be there. And it's, it's really sad. And so any form of racism or any form of hate that we see, we're just going to pray. Right. That's what we need to do. And show love. And show oh, love. Yes. And be the light. No well, and to go with all this, Kathy Williams says, how much pressure do you feel to conform to the culture? Right. To be honest. <laughs> Zero. Because, I mean, Israel, Israel is quite a mixing pie. Yeah. You've got Jews from all over the world, that, and they're all a different culture. Um, I mean, from Afghan, from Afghanistan, <laughs> to, from Africa right. to China to 
Europe to you know, you know, there's, here. There's a lot of Russian uh, Jews uh, around here in our town. Russian Jews are great. Uh, I actually love the Russian Jews. In, but they're all, the majority of them are non-religious. Um, let's see. So, I mean, the culture mix is very similar to America as far as a mixing pot like that. Um, but um, but it, they're, the majority of them are either non-religious or they're some type of orthodoxy, except for, you know, the there's probably about 10%. I might be generous there, but I'd say there's about 10% of this town are believers. And again, that's one of the things that we're praying for that, and we ask you to pray to Yah stir a fire in these believers to get their head out of the dirt and quit hiding in the shadows. It's time for believers to rise up in this country, Meshbahar, because what the believers do here affects the whole world. I'm telling you that. Yah told Israel that if you obey me, I will bless the nations through you. If we can get believers to rise up in this nation and hold their head up high and quit, quit sticking their head in the dirt and hide, then we will see an amazing moving of Yehovah uh, through this land. Which script, which we know what has to happen in these last days, is a part of the greater second exodus, and you know there's so much that has to happen, and so much that will happen, and so uh, so keep that prayer, Miss Baha. Please keep remembering to pray, pray, and even fast if you're willing, fast for the believers in this land to rise up and to quit hiding and to quit whispering. Right. Everybody wants to whisper. Even out that's front, like, that's talking. That's yeah, that's yeah that's don't, that's don't, that's don't say that. Don't say that. I know, our windows are open, and sometimes I'm like, it's just because this is our home, and I, I don't want to bring, I, I want to keep this like a sanctuary, like I don't want to bring pressure against our home. But today it was like, we, we had all the windows open, we were singing. You know, uh, we were singing, boy. We were singing, you wow. We were gripping the shofars and everything. Yeah. Because <laughs> this this ain't and and you know with what my wife said this is our home but we God gave us this. Home. We're not trying to be obnoxious. Right. Either, so. Yeah, we're supposed to be wise as a serpent, and gentle as a dove. We're trying. And there were times even Yeshua. <laughs> there was times even Yeshua knew to not say anything. And so, even bow out of the crowd because yeah. they were coming to kill him, and all exactly. of a sudden he was gone. Time yet. Wasn't yeah. time yet. So right. we know when to leave. When to, we'll know when to leave. When to be quiet. When to speak. If if we're listening to someone Amen. in Amen. Yeah, we've moved here permanently, Gloria. Our joyful souls will win them over a <laughs> from your lips to Yah's ears. Amen. <laughs> that would be awesome. We, well, we want to be a light in our neighborhood. And we need more believers Thanks who have us. a fire in them like we do to come. To come from America, come from Canada, come from around the world, because to help us spark a fire in the rear end of the believers who have come here and fallen into that complacency and that what we hiding. We're going to make some noise. That's right. Everybody else does to come into the land, and all the believers go crawling a hole and in the corner as soon as they fear. get here and hide. It's fair. It's fair. Yep. Of, uh, with the government and what everyone else fear is man. here. Fear man. Right. Oh, you'll get kicked out. He doesn't send the spirit to kill them. Right? All right. But the power and of sound mind. Yeah, and I wouldn't have sent us here if y'all's not capable of keeping us here. Man, they ain't got nothing. I don't care what the government says. I don't care what the rules are. I don't care how many people want to tattletale on us. As long as we're being liars, right? we're, we're not acting right. in our flesh. Right. We're not acting in our own right. desires. We're not being foolish. We're seeking after Him and we're listening to His direction and we're walking the straight path. That's right. That's right. He's calling us to walk. If we don't take a step off the path, He's going to keep us. If we're shadow stepping our That's King. Right. We stay in the shadow of the Almighty. What is going to come into that shadow to try and get us? Oh, what is stronger than Him? Right. What, what, if He goes before us, who can come against us? Right. Seriously, these are no weapon for against us shall prosper. We are more than conquerors. Amen. That's right. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, these words are power. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. 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 Yeah.
and you need to, and you don't just say them, you don't just say, oh, we're quoting these things. I mean, you have to really believe you have to what you're saying. Live you're speaking life. Yes. And this is we're, what we're living. We're living these words. We're living by it every single day. Every and we are really, day. really, uh, just to roll with her on this, Mish Baha, we are really learning what it means to, like she just said, live by these words every day. It's one thing to say these words, but man to actually have to live by them. We have to live by them yeah. every we single day. We, we have, have to, to remind ourselves. We have to speak. We have to confess. We have to be bold. We have to proclaim every day. No weapon formed us shall prosper. Yah will, yes, Yah will not bring us where he can't keep us. And all these because things are the promises of his word. Because if we don't, we're going to get eaten alive. Yeah. We've already felt the pressure from the enemy alone. Yeah. I mean, if we don't stay in prayer together every single night, the enemy's going to try and sneak up into our house. This is, right. this is, this is, uh, he's going to come in through the windows. <laughs> Just like I shared with you guys on the show. And he's going to, he's going to sneak in through the corners and the cracks and he's going to try and come after us. And we have to stay vigilant. Like, we, digital, Diligent. 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 We have to stay diligent. Switch the LNG. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, more than we ever have before. Yeah, it's really had to up our game. We had to up our, our game, man. We had to start praying more. And, and it took us two or three weeks to kind of feel it out. And we're like, okay, we see what's happening. Yah is really showing us different things, allowing different things to happen so we can learn and learn quick. Because we don't we don't have time to sit and go play by play and learn learn everything. We have to be quick learners on our feet yeah. while we're moving. And so it's it's been quite an experience. We are learning on our feet right now. Yeah. So yeah. and you know, yeah. we're it's funny because if you're one person, you're getting kicked around, you're on the field, you're getting pushed around. But we are eight people <laughs> strong and we're like we're, and we're, we're nine locked two arms. Middle. We're like we're like locked arms. And I, I see this it, I don't, I get excited right now because I, I think from everything we've already been through, everything that we've already conquered, I can just see us getting stronger and growing and going uphill, right? Our view is getting better as we're growing and we're getting stronger. And it's just, I don't know, I just, I'm so thankful for the trials that we've already had. And I know I probably should be so excited about trials, but I mean, seriously, it's what's, give, it's what's giving us, it's what's giving, it's what's my giving us ready for what's coming too. I, I'm well. getting stronger. Living here, I thought I had thick skin in the states because of us doing different <laughs> things on different outlets, different social medias. We had men coming against me because I was speaking or not covering my head or whatever. I thought I had thick skin. Uh -uh, no, coming out here, this is this is really what is going to condition us spiritually, condition us for spiritual warfare and battle. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, so, and also to go with that, I just want to say something. Warring and worshiping. Right. Well, just one thing was what I shared in the ministry today, uh, in, the, in the message today. We need each other. And it's about what it means that Anthony's not my enemy. He, he's my brother. I need him. I need him. I need my wife. My wife and I need Anthony and Angela, and they need us. We need each other more than we have ever needed anybody in our life because of where we're at. Would you guys agree with that? We can't do Absolutely. this without each other, with Yah leading. This is why Yah brought us here together as a team. And we can't ever I'm allow that to fall bring, apart. I'm glad he didn't bring us back just us. Uh, I'm actually yeah. glad we have you guys and we have more people coming because we hold each other accountable in a way that a married couple can, they're one. You can hold each other accountable, but she can also speak to each other the way really nobody else can. You don't speak to anybody else that way. And so it's nice to have somebody else who's like, okay, I see what's happening here. Can you guys sit down and let's figure this out? And we're home team. Like we are all in it together. It's you not just about us. Friends. It's not just about us or about them. We're all one. We're all God. We're a unit. Like Yeshua and the Father are a unit. We're a unit, <laughs> and it's. It, it, I feel like it's almost like spiritual military kind of totally. mindset. It's. I, I feel like as much as we worship, we're warring. We're worshiping. We're right. warring. We're worshiping. 
That's right. And we're learning to do, okay, chill, we're learning to do <laughs> spiritual battle. Like, this is something that I feel like God's always kind of put on me to, to battle in the spirit, to get down. The, the, the best way to stand against anything is to, is to kneel. If you ever want to stand against anything in, in victory, you have to kneel first. If you ever want to lead your family or you want to lead in, in, in whatever it is God's calling you to do, you have to serve. You have to serve the king. Yeah. I just want, I, our lives are in service to him. And no matter where you are or what you're doing, you don't have to be in the land for your life to be in complete and utter surrender of service to him. And the days are growing shorter, and the, the it, everything is getting more and more wicked. And I can, we can't stress enough how close you need to stay to your Messiah, to your King, to your Creator. I mean, and I keep saying this one word to shadow step Him. I mean, there was a teaching that was done. Um, it was going to be part of another. Sorry, guys. Here I go. It was his turn. No, uh, no. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, can I go. <laughs> you can hang on to it. Go okay, I'm just going to give a little bit. Um, I'll just say this. That way you can say what you need to say. When, I'm just going to say for the sake of argument, rabbi. We don't call them rabbis, but, okay, so we'll say, we'll say Hebrew priests. Can we say that? Priests? Preachers? What do you Jewish want? pastors. I don't call them rabbi. I have one rabbi, but we do say the word just so that you, you people know what we're talking about. So that they will teach up the kids. They will bring them up. And they choose the best of the best of the best. And they have to go through different levels. And the first level, you learn, like, you know, you memorize Genesis or something. And the best of those will keep going on with the... With the and the with best the of the best memorize the, the most of the Torah. The, other, the rest go home with their family to go do the family business or whatever it is. And you go through another level, and then you have more trickling off. And the best of those move on to the next level, and you have more trickling off. But when you get down to like the 10th level, those are the children, those are the kids who the rabbis will choose to follow, um, to become like them. They're Talmudim. They're Talmudim. And then those Talmudim also have to choose which rabbi they want to go with. And so once that choice is made, if the Talmudim and the rabbi connect and they've chosen the right student, the student has chosen the right rabbi, you are like this with this rabbi. When he eats, you eat. What he smells, you smell. Where where he goes, you go. What he reads, you read. You are literally shadow stepping. Connected at the hip. You're All shadow right. stepping that man. You are not moving away from everything. You have to breathe, eat, smell everything as he does, because this is what your life has now become. And so the saying was, "May you be covered in the dust of your rabbi." Because you're so close to him, where his feet and his sandals go, the dust comes on you. And so I took that as Yeshua, Yehovah Yeshua. I want to be covered in the dust of my Papa. I want to be so close to my king that his dust is all over me. And so being out here, I realized. It's a thin line. It's a thin line. And yeah. no matter where you are, stay as close to him as possible. There's a lot going on on social media. There's a lot going on on different sites and stuff. People coming against each other, like what he was talking about. Just part the waters. Just sift through all of that garbage and stay close to your king. And, 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 and be a light through all of the chaos and all of the darkness. And I promise you, when all... Of this crap breaks breaks off. You're going to be the one that Yah is going to use as a willing vessel, a vessel that He created for His glory to be a light, to be a city on a hill where people will come to for refuge if you stay close to Him. So may you all be covered in the dust of your rabbis. Amen. Right? <laughs> rabbis. Rabbi. Okay. Sorry. Rabbi, yeah. <laughs> one. There's may one. we all be covered in may the dust of our rabbis. <laughs> I did not mean to get off on that side. <laughs> you know, with the, the clothes that we just had of Monto, as, as we're sitting here talking about everything that we've kind of been going through and um, the, the trials and things that we've had, you know, in the land and the experiences that we've been having, 
uh, one thing that I'll say, uh, especially about being here, is ex being able to experience these feasts in a whole new light, in a deeper light, um, in a in a in a sense of just complete, like like you guys were saying, like Michelle was saying, like you were saying, um, it's it's not an option to to believe whether or not. You know, Yah's going to be faithful or Yah's going to provide or Yah's going to be merciful and even allow us to keep these feasts. Like, this is what we're walking in every single day and an expectation. And, and with, with Mato, he's really been showing us, um, everyone at this table, all of our family, all, all eight of us, how, how important it is that we are completely vulnerable with our King and willing to give up every single part of us, give up every single piece of us that has, has been molded by the world or has been molded by something we've been through or some, some, some way somebody's hurt us or something we've done. We've literally had to self-examine ourselves in a way that I've never had to do before. You know, the, like she was saying, the, the accountability here is, is, is more uh, severe. The, the walking righteously before Yah is, is more important now, I believe, for us anyway, than, than it ever has been. Yeah. And I mean, because of where we're at and because we all need each other and we all lean on each other. And if one of us is falling, it, it, then it's almost as if we're only as strong as our weakest link. We need to pick that person up yeah. so that we can keep going forward. We because Yeah, exactly. And it's just experiencing this has just been so so eye-opening and, and it just makes makes me want to become even that more of a man that is covered in the dust of my rabbi that does reflect him that, that does carry around his presence and carry around his heart and is a reflection of him constantly no matter no matter what's going on in the world no matter what's going on around us and so man just it, it's really that's definitely something that's helped me a lot especially with Pesach and Monzo and 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 being here with all of all of our family here and doing it together and yeah. it's just completely in a <laughs> in a place of mercy <laughs> and and uh, wow it's just been really it's been really awesome. Um, Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree completely with with the whole um, you know the whole battlefield warlike mindset. You know we have to have that. We have to have that because here. We're not allowed to see things through our fleshly eyes because if we do it, then problems happen. Yep. If we do it here, right away. it's not like, you know, I don't know why we're like airing all of our personal stuff right now, it's but it's for sure. Our dirty laundry, we, I guess. I, I this is good for them. Here's but another it, thing. I don't want to make it sound like we've been out here just fighting. That's not what's been like that at all. Like, well, no. I, I don't want to, yeah. Okay. Well, well, it's not like you guys know, waiting for the weighing, weighing, when you have, you when, you, yeah, when you have, yeah, when you have your own home, you. You can try, you can't hide anything from Yah, but you can hide a lot from the rest of the world. But when you're in a community, a kibbutz, right. of, of like-minded believers, like right. the disciples were, like like they were in the biblical times, it's like, there's no hiding anything. No. You know, you say we had that that expression, you really get to know someone that's a code because you spend yeah. all that time with them. You're around yeah. them every day, you're camping out with them. And for any of you who have not kept a code with the group, with the community, it's an experience. It's yeah. a blessing, but it can also be trying at times because you get to see people for you know who they really are. All these. It's things. easy to put on a front, right, for a few hours on Shabbat. Exactly. But go spend nine, not ten we, days. We're not the type of go live that. nine, ten days with somebody camping. They're not going to be able to keep that exact exactly. facade up for nine, ten days. You're exactly. going to find out more of what they're like. But and so just just being in this live together, exactly this community constantly. This is it. This is us. You know what I mean? We really had to allow. We have to see each other when we wake up in the morning, when we go to bed. Awesome bald head that I love. <laughs> uh, we've had to. We've had to shower. Yeah. <laughs> right? We've had to allow God to just do things within us. At least for me, I'm speaking for myself that I've, I've never, I've never done before. This is a completely different type of surrender. It, it really is. And it's not like, like it's just a different. It's different because of the spiritual aspect being right. If we walk, like I said earlier, if we walk in our flesh for even just a moment, right. the enemy can literally take that and run with it. Yeah. The enemy can literally take that and make something that isn't even anything into something huge, oh. and it's all just hot air. Because 
that's what that's what happens when we allow ourselves to be in the flesh. And we, I want to emphasize, get in that mentality now. It doesn't matter if you're here or not. Wherever you're at in your work, in your walk, wherever you live, wherever you're around, constantly try to strive on walking in the spirit, not walking in the flesh. Because the enemy does the same thing to every single one of us who are a child of the Most High. Every single one of us who are a professor of Yeshua, and we really are striving to keep the commandments and walk righteously before Him. Any time we give him any little bit of ground to be in our flesh and to let our emotions rule, then he's going to use that against us. And I've, I've, I've never understood that more than, than here and now, where, where this season that we're in right now, where we're at now. And, man, it's just having that battlefield warlike mentality. There have been so many times where I've – I was telling this to my dad earlier when we were talking. Um, I've gone through a lot, you know, especially – overseas and stuff and there were there were times that I asked Yah and I asked myself why why did I have to go through that why did I have to see some of the things that I saw why did I, why did I have to have to go through that kind of that kind of trauma or whatever you want to call it and even even when I completely surrendered my heart to him completely started following him there's still a little piece of me that was like yeah you know why you know but now that I'm here I understand completely Hi. Now that I'm here and, and where we're at and the, the, the way things are, this culture, this, this land, the, the thick air, it's like, okay, how about thick air. I get it now. I, I know why I had to go through the front lines and I know why I had to do the things that I did and, and all that because this is the front lines. Yeah. This is literally yeah. the front lines of, of the world. First in the physical, then in the spiritual, <laughs> right? He's and same with you, same with all of us. In our own way, in yeah. a different way, we've all kind of been at the front lines of something, and yeah. now he's taking us and bringing it full circle, bringing it back around. And and here's the thing, we we're, we're learning how to have that group mentality, like a hive mind, kind yeah, of, yeah. you know, because we're one in him. Yeah. This is good to learn right now. It really is. And so for us to share and be open and to be um, transparent, transparent, yeah. Uh, to not be, you know, um, yeah, tra transparent, trying to get the other way. Yeah. Just to be open with you guys, um, that we, we believe that God is making us pioneers in this in this way to come out here Amen. and to do this. And so I, we really hope that what we're going through um, will bless you guys, yes. will help you guys understand what it's going and to be like. And get you ready for yes. Because we are going to be living like Any of like you this. that may be coming to yeah. the land down yeah. the road. It's yeah. going gonna, gonna to come sooner than later. Um, we're, we're going to have to live like this. We're going to have to live with other people, and it's better. Yeah. It's better to realize it really you know, is. we're supposed to die to ourselves. We're, exactly. supposed to put other, we're supposed to love everybody like exactly. you love yourself. Yeah. So if you're putting everybody else ahead of you without becoming a doormat, you know, there's balance, then you're, you're, you're ahead of the game. Yeah. So, and, the thing, and the thing, too, Mish uh to continue on with talking about how, like Anthony said, we can't for a second let our guard down. Yeah. Yeah. Not even for a second because Satan's on it, man. He's yeah. like a rabid dog standing there waiting <laughs> just, Seriously. just for just one one spot. And and, and what's a good analogy, like um, I was listening to a, a message um, that this guy was talking about, and the great analogy is when when a when an army comes against a city to seize it, they're not coming straight at the front door thinking they're just going to open up the door, come in and sack the place. They're looking for any spot that might have a weak spot, weak point, a hole in the wall, you know, stuff like that, like Anthony was saying. Satan is always waiting for us to just have just one second, one second of letting our guard down and thinking the flesh and stuff. And it's the same thing with over the years I've, preached so many times or I've shared so many times in the message about the word tikva, yeah. hope. Yeah. It means expectation. <laughs> Mishpaha, I, <laughs> I never realized how much that word is so true till coming and us being here. Even when we were here in 09, it wasn't like this. It was, it's, it's magnified and it's not horrible. Don't get me wrong. It is absolutely amazing but at the same time it could be the most horrible thing in the world if you don't pay attention yeah, exactly. and with that tikva that expectation 
We every day have to expect Yah to give us what we need mentally, emotionally, physically, yeah. financially, and number one, spiritually. <clears throat> we have to expect Him to give us strength to yeah. stay rooted together as a, as a mishpaha, as as a, what did you uh, join me? A, a unit. Um, but anyways, a as a hive mind, I love yeah, yeah. that hive mind, and I love that we have to be one mind, yeah. one doctrine, one spirit, and and we have to be that. We have to. We cannot be offset any of us yeah. in any way, shape, or form, or it gives the enemy mission to come against. And she literally every day. When we wake up yeah, to the moment we go, go to bed, there, man, man go to we church. expect God to do what he says he'll do. He says, if you oh, and I'm going to read this, because this, I have never stood on this more than since we have been here. And I tell you what, it is, I mean, not only is it a part of the ministry as far as, wow, that battery just went down so, so fast. You wrote that for um, is this right here? Let me share this with you real quick. Uh, you always make me cry every Shabbat. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14. Mishpaha, this is expectation. This is what we can expect every single day if we do what the following verses say to do. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. Now it shall come to pass if... You diligently obey the voice of Yehovah your Elohim to observe carefully all his commandments, all, not some, all, which I command you today that Yehovah your El will set you high above the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of Yehovah your Elohim. First, he says, blessed shall be shall you be in the city that's right right here in our city Amen. then blessed shall you be in the country and that is the nation of israel for us here blessed shall be the fruit of your body health uh, uh strength what is the torah it is health to our bones and healing to our flesh Amen. um the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds so that in this particular thing and the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock, obviously we don't have that yet. So in this case, it would be our finances. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl, that we shall always have food in our cupboards. Yah says those who keep his Torah, that they will not hunger for bread nor thirst for water. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. Yehovah will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Yehovah will command the blessing on you in your storehouse. It says Yehovah will command. He will command. He will command it to be a blessing on you in your storehouses. And in all which you set your hand, he will bless you in the land which Yehovah your El is giving you. Man. Oh. Yehovah will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. If you, if you keep the commandments of Yehovah your Elohim and walk in his ways, then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called, that you are called by the name of Yehovah. They shall be afraid of you. <sighs> Believers in this land are afraid of everybody else. They're supposed to be afraid of us. They are supposed to be afraid of us, Mishpahat. What are we doing wrong? And Sorry. Yehovah will grant you plenty of goods and the fruit of your body and the increase of your livestock in the produce of your ground, in the land which Yehovah swore to your fathers to give to you, Yehovah will open to you his good treasure, 
the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season, to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Yehovah will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath. If you heed, again, if you heed, obey, listen, keep, is what all that means. The commandments of Yehovah your Elohim, which I command you today and are careful to observe them, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Can you say that again? What that was? Exactly. And that is Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. That is the promise that we here stand on, Ms. Bahar, and we expect not in arrogance, but in humility in humbleness and reverence to Yehovah, we can expect Yah to do exactly what this says. All we got to do is obey his word. Walk in obedience. Like Taylor, if, if, if. Amen. We Ms. have, that's, that's key. Emphasis on if. Go ahead, sorry. You're good. Mitch, we want these things, I've, I've, I've come to realize more than ever before that if we want everything that was read through the scriptures, these beautiful promises, this amazing uh, promise that we have from our king. If we truly want these things, we can't be spiritually lazy. We can't be spiritually comfortable or complacent. That's one thing that Yah has been teaching all of us, me and myself included, through Brother Paul and through everyone in this house, is that this walk in this warlike mentality requires a lot of discipline. It really does. If because we can, we can. We've set up schedules throughout our day routines to stick to prayer time, scripture studies time, and and to be transparent, there have been times where we missed a session and Mishpachah right away. It's like you can just feel it. You yeah. can feel the air changes or something will come up or whatnot, and it's just like we were saying earlier. Like you said, the enemy's literally just waiting for his moment. Yep. He's waiting for us to let our guard down. He's waiting for us to get to get mind. lax. It's yeah, he, he's proud. And Peter talks about Proud-ing. roaming back and forth, looking for and forth. who he may devour. That's yeah. exactly right. So we need to be in our in our discipline and our in our routines of giving Yah the first fruits of our day, giving Him time in prayer, always constantly thinking about Him, going to sleep praying, going to sleep reading scriptures. These kinds of things we have to be. Devoted, Mr. How we have to. I love the way that that thing says it is to. We have to prepare our heart to engage seeking Yah. We have to engage the heart, prepare the heart. What is it? Conditioning the heart, right? Close. In conditioning the heart, engage the heart, prepare the heart to seek Yahweh. Yes. And if you're wondering where that's coming from, you'll find out in a few Shabbats when I have I do a message on it. It's powerful. Yeah. I cannot wait to do this message. I personally believe it's going to be one of the most powerful sermons that Yah has ever allowed myself to speak, to preach on. And Anthony and I are doing it together, I think. Even more than the greatest truth. It's a different kind of powerful. Okay, that, that that's a revelation. Huge. That's a great revelation of who Yeshua is all through Scripture. That was huge. But um, yeah, that is huge. But I'm, I'm talking about probably more on an emotional level, impactful to me that way, I guess. Um, but yeah, life changing in the sense of it, 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 it'll change your life if you allow it to. Exactly. Walk, change the way you walk, change the way you talk. Yeah, all of everything. Yeah. You know? Everything. And Ms. Baha, just to share a little bit, only for the sake of understanding what we're doing here and what you got to do, um, may it be an example, because we're not perfect by any means. Um, you know, every morning, as, as, as the head of the, our, our families and as the head of the ministry here and everything else, Anthony and I get up in the morning and we meet here at the table every morning. Um, 7.30, uh, when we get up, we meet here at the table, we get to the Word together, and we pray over everything. Um, 
and then by nine o'clock, Michelle and Angela and Brianna and Michaela, they meet here together in the living room and they have the women's time getting into the word together and, 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 and having their prayer time and, and studying out the word. Then we have, you know, every, Bible study, then every, yeah, women's Bible study. Then every night after dinner, as a family, all eight of us, including the little ones, we get together for family prayer where we pray over each other. We pray over you guys. We pray over whatever y'all leads us to pray in. And then every Sunday evening as it's beginning to happen is Anthony and Angela do uh, the Torah portion reading. And tomorrow night they'll do the next one. Uh, every Tuesday night, me and Anthony do two men in the Torah. Mm -hmm. I've already put it on the thing when I uploaded it. You told me I could. You told me I could. But, and for those, some of you may already know, but you're about to find out the rest, is that Michelle. Give it away. Give it away. No, Michelle and Angela have now started two women in the Torah, Yay. and which is Perfect. Last night was their first show, and they're going to do it every other week or whatever they decide to do. And awesome. we have something put together. And then, um, to it, and then third, and then you know, and whatever else you know, we're doing. Plus our own personal time with Yah, our own time alone with Yah in the Word and and and, and in prayer, and um, you know, nice. along with doing what we're doing with ministry, and I mean everything. Thursday nights were supposed to start. Well, <laughs> we were supposed to start our Hebrew. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's not. But, yeah. Yeah, that's, just, that's just another way to, to uh, you know, assimilate, you know, and be able to assimilate. <laughs> what are we, the board? The word. <laughs> I know, right? I, Captain Kirk, or <laughs> Picard. <laughs> Picard. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But it, it's good because oh, it, it helps us to read. Helps us to read the word. Look, Mishpahai. Uh, it's good for it's good for us to well, even include Hebrew. And so well, it's, it learning the, learning yeah. the Hebrew okay, is just important okay. because right. then we can read the road signs and we can read where we're going. And, and I'm starting to read a lot faster my daughter. Actually, she's listening to me and she's like, "Wow, mom, you're really starting to read kind of fast." And okay, but we'll be able to read in the <laughs> Bible. Cute. We'll be able to read in the Bible. And, well, and the other thing is, the, the final thing, Ms. Baha, is, you you know, it's easy to spend three hours watching TV. It's easy to spend hours on the day on your phone or on the laptop or going or doing whatever except being in the Word. The Word has to come to a point where you hunger the Word, hunger after the Word of God more than your breath. You have to be to the point where you... If you're not reading the word, you feel empty. If you're not in prayer, you feel alone or whatever. You're, you, if you want to see Yah supernaturally move in your life in ways that you see men in the, or women in the Bible being done, then you need to come to the point where you are seeking God in every aspect of your life. Just saying, oh, I want this and expecting God to give it to you is not ever going to happen. You're, in, you're delusional. If you want it, then you have. Yah says that He gives. Draw he gives. He, draw, yes, he says, draw. You draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you. God yeah. requires. He said because He loved us first, because That's He right. sacrificed. He for did us His first. duty, so to speak. He it's creates, our duty to chase after. He hides His treasures in Amen. jars of clay. We are supposed to activate that word in our life. We're supposed to Amen. make it come to life. By being obedient, our first step of obedience is saying, "I believe in you. I I will follow you. Where you go, I will. I will. Where you send me, I will go." That's our first act of obedience, and from there, it's one step closer to our King. Every step we take, we take a step closer to our King, to our Messiah. And Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen: If you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with all of your heart, not a little bit. Not 80%, not what's good for you. It's it's all or none, Ms. Baha. You want to see y'all use you in, 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 in a way that you read about the word, then you're going to have to change everything about who you are. You have got to get rid of self 150% gone. Be done with you. You've got to become a man or a woman of Yah 
that is like them. And that comes through prayer, fasting, studying in the word, constantly seeking to be in the presence of Yah and being willing to sacrifice anything, anyone, and everything in your life to do it. And it, it goes as far as to say to hate mother, father, and daughter. And not that, sister, you're, not that you're daughter, literally yeah. hating them, but that you're putting God above everything else in your life. That you're willing to walk away if he tells you, I want you to go here and I want you to. You don't know what it's going to do for that person. That's right. I mean, it, in, in, the, in the flesh, we might say, I have, I have a responsibility, I have to do this, or I have to do that. But if God's telling you to do something, you need to listen to the Father before or you listen to your Creator before you listen to anything else. Because His design and plan for your life is better than anything you've come up with on your own. Anything. Amen. Guaranteed. Hands down. <laughs> Amen. All right, so question way back here. I've kept it here. Nick Church. The Trinity... Why are we told to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit is the essence between Yehovah and the Son, but it's a duality. It's not a trinity. The Holy Spirit is what convicts us and everything, but the Holy Spirit is not a being. Scripture never teaches the Holy Spirit as a being. It always connects as the Spirit of Yehovah did this, the Spirit of Yehovah did that, the Spirit of Yehovah this and that, that and this. Holy Spirit comes upon us. It is the essence that is con that connects the Father and the Son together, and all that. In a short answer, and then Anthony's going to share a longer answer. No, I can I see that. No, I, I'll I'll just I'll just throw in a little bit here because uh, I don't remember the verse off the top of my head. Maybe you do, but there is a specific verse in the Brit Hadashah that says. Uh, to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's in Matthew or John. Um, but there, I would I would advise anybody that is interested to look into the translation because you know it's been a long time since I've studied this, but there's there could be some potential translation discrepancies. Um, for example, you know some people think that the Catholic Church added um, that Trinity like phrase to promote their doctrine. Um, I would advise you to go and study that out, study that verse out for sure, pray about it for me personally, and uh, I, I do believe that we all, that we share the same conviction because of what scripture has shown us about Yehovah being a family name and the Rock HaKadosh, like Paul just said, being the spirit of Yehovah, um, when we when we baptize, if, if when we mikvah, if we say, you know, in the name of Yehovah, you're covering all of them. You're covering the Father. You're covering the Son. You're covering the Spirit of Yehovah. So, if I were to baptize somebody, I would I would baptize them in the name of Yehovah. That's that's what what would work for for me. Do you agree with that? <laughs> Never mind. I'm listening. Um, but uh, so fall, man. She asked right. me a question. That, that's what I would encourage you to do. So, well, I'm sure I would agree with it. Man. You know how many times <laughs> you guys have done that? Just you know how many times I've done that to both me and both yeah, I'm sure yeah, I probably did. Yeah, what he said. What he said. What he said. What did you say? What was the last sentence? Know, the okay. last two sentences. We baptized in the name of Yom Bob. That's exactly right. Big in the name of Yom Bob. That's exactly right. It covers the spirit of Yom Bob, the Father, and the Son. It's all Yom Bob. It's all in the name of Yom Bob. And it could, and it, yeah, and you probably said this. When she was talking to me and interrupting you by talking to me. Excuse me? <laughs> That's, okay, I'm just kidding. Uh -huh. But <laughs> it, it, it's probably a reference that to not as to be looked at as three separate things, but when you pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, it's all the family name. That's, that's, that's certainly, yeah, I never even thought of that. Yehovah the Father, Yehovah the Son. Yehovah Yeshua, all bearing, exactly all bearing the head, and the Holy Spirit, which is yeah, which is yeah, which comes from the Father. Amen. So, Amen. yeah, because there's no, um, there's not any only begotten Holy Spirit. What are you? Why are you dating? Because I, I just keep it going. Mm -hmm. Keep biting us. Um, it bit, something bit me on my ankle and it's like, I'm bitten up my it's way okay. on my cat. No, it's small. I'm bitten up. Brianna has three huge welts on her arm. That ain't a mosquito. That was Unless weird. it's a I mean, crazy it's... Israeli mosquito. I don't know about. <laughs> Maybe it's bug bites. We're starting to get, we pray, actually. We've been praying <laughs> every night. We're like, 
Because we don't have, we don't, we don't, okay, here's the disclaimer. Uh, we don't have bed frames yet because there's eight of us. So we have makeshift, we have mattresses, and then we, we kind of made a, at higher we put, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying this all the We put air mattresses underneath our mattresses to put, pop them up a little bit before, because we'll, eventually we'll get this. So we're not on the ground. So we're not on the ground ground because I, yeah, I just don't want to, so every night we go see them, please don't let anybody get bit by a bug. Please don't let anybody get bit by a bug. All right, Mary, Mary said, giving trans people, Giving people transparency will provide realistic expectations of the land. Wow, you are way back there. I know we're catching up a little bit, and that's exactly right. That's we're, we're not. We're not going to sit here and say, "Oh, it's so oh, perfect," fine, okay. and, and come on over. No, you you got to be ready spiritually. Yep. Um, and and it's not easy, but it is. But it's more rewarding and more amazing than anything you'll ever experience, too. Why did Gary Garcia um, say? Remember it's Jonah? Breathtaking. He wasn't obedient and ended up in the belly of a whale. That's, right. <laughs> That's good. Um, oh, Terry, yeah. We can tag you. I'll, I'll tag you as soon as we're done. I'll go tag you on the video. All right. We had a good time last night. Mm -hmm. It was fun. It was our first one together. Mm -hmm. So we'll definitely tag you. We can even bring her in. That would be really cool. cool because there's ways of inviting people to come on, on the video. Yeah, that would be cool. If yeah. you do that, the people who are watching live either won't hear you or won't hear them. We've already tried it and it won't work. If you're live Did and you tried to bring in here. Um well it wasn't here, but it doesn't matter. It's Facebook. Uh, we tried doing it. Remember that one Everybody time that on you Facebook. and I tried to do it with Anthony and Angela because they because we had we canceled the sword talk to Facebook's Facebook. It still we'll works the same. Time, no, they don't. Now yes. from live. We'll, we'll try. Yes, they do. We'll do it like a test. Run. Yeah, All right, we'll we try. can. We can test. Actually, we'll you're try. right. That's true. We'll be so so we'll try. yeah, we'll try it again because our house there was terrible. We had terrible internet. internet there. We have we have decent internet here. So Tamara yeah. voluntold you that you're gonna be in our business. <laughs> we just voluntold been told no. <laughs> voluntold you, voluntold. We voluntold you. Voluntold. <laughs> That's funny. Fish corrected. What is that? Is it a fish going well? It didn't matter. It was big enough to swallow him whole, so it's only thing that matters. Okay. So, are there any more questions? No. Nothing. Nothing. Questions. Anthony Lopez, what's up, brother? I was thinking, is this live or is this Memorex? <laughs> oh man, that's a whole one right there. Like, why does that sound familiar? That's a whole. Why does that's that sound funny. Familiar? That's funny, Anthony Lopez. I like him. Why does that sound? Is that an old commercial? It's an old commercial. What's the saying? What's the actual saying? We all is mosquito bad. Where? I'm not kidding. Mosquitoes okay. don't like me. They they leave me alone. I love it. But you know. You know why they like you guys? Because you got all that perfumey stuff on. They love that stuff. Um, we need to get skin cells off from Avon. We need to order a bunch of that. Skin cells off. <laughs> Um, questions, guys. You guys got any more questions about <coughs> any kind of biblical topic? What, what time is it? Oh, it's only this time. Dang, we've been going for an hour and three minutes already. I know. Hour, That's crazy. Hour, I didn't even feel that long. Yeah, we were, we were on a roll. When you go on a roll, it's just like. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> really cool, actually. No, that's really cool. Yeah, it is. Oh. <laughs> yes, yeah, skin so soft works great. We, I've never been bit by a mosquito. Grew up in California. Came to Col went, moved to Colorado. Love you too, brother. Moved to Colorado. We didn't done? have bit by mosquitoes. And then we moved to Kentucky. And I got attacked. Like, I got sick. I had to go to the hospital. I had bruises and welts all up and down my legs. I had like 40. Mosquito bites. Those oh. were those were chiggers. Yeah, those were chigger stop, bites. Stop, stop, stop. You're remembering something else. I had 40 mosquito bites all up and down my legs, and oh, I was yeah, I was allergic to them. 
Not anymore. <laughs> so he said, well, you made it. You're good. Um, you'll get bit from now on, and you, you, you just built up an immunity to him. He's like, there's nothing I can give to you. Uh, you just had to do it naturally. He's like, you know, yeah, she got, pretty much good thing you didn't die or you didn't end up in the hospital. She got sick, though. She wouldn't feel I so got well sick. I had day. so many bites all up and down my legs. They were bruises. It looked like I got hit by, like, <laughs> 40, 40, uh, paintball things. No, 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 this was a, they went this big, bruise, and I had, a, my legs were black and blue from mosquito bites, and yeah, ever since then, I've gotten bit, if I ever got bit by a mosquito, I either don't know it because it doesn't itch, or I just don't get bit anymore, like, they, they, I smell different, I don't know, they put something in my body, so, but skin so soft, we started using that. In Kentucky, and it really does keep the mosquitoes away. Jean Ballon, he says, Have we read the Peshitta, and do you know about the word milta? Do tell. Peshitta? Peshitta. Is he talking about the Torah? The, the Peshitta, and I haven't heard about the Peshitta since the first two years of keeping Torah. Um, and I'm I don't read it, I haven't read it, so I'm not educated to say nothing. Mary said, are the fabrics like linen affordable there? Can I just say that this town that we're in is stuck in the 50s, so I don't know. <laughs> Everybody is stuck in the 50s. They truly are. You would not believe the way that some of these women are dressed. I'm like, I feel like I've gone back in time. It's really bit. crazy. Yeah. I'm, waiting for, I'm, I'm waiting for Michael J. Fox to go rolling downtown with a the DeLorean. Dresses, the dresses, the stockings, the shoes, the head, the hats, the, the wigs, yeah. the hand gloves, the, for the purses. I'm like, what's happening right now? Yeah, it's, 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 this must just be the town brand. But me and Angela are like, what is going on? <laughs> what's happening? We're still so we still don't know. Shopping is definitely different. <laughs> the, fabrics, the fabrics feel pretty much the same. Still learning. These these are cool. This this tablecloth we have. You know how expensive tablecloths are in the states. This tablecloth we have. We got two. It's seven shekels a meter. We got, I got two meters to cover. Cool. I got seven, two meters to cover the table for fourteen shekels, which it's so weird. The things that you think are going to be expensive right. are super cheap, and the things that should be cheap are kind of expensive. It's really it's very different. They're trying to catch up to there. <laughs> It's fun. Uh, We're trying to catch you. Yeah, because yeah, Tamara knows what it's like here. Yeah. yeah. According to Torah, we must wear linen. What is your view about it? Uh, I wish we could have. Uh, it says to just not mix the yeah, same. It doesn't necessarily. I don't think it says. Don't mix linen and wool together. Yeah, right. not to mix different linens. I'm sure linens people wore wool and linen. Just not mixed, not woven together. Yeah, right. they're not supposed to be a linen wool shirt. And we really believe that that's because of frequencies that it sends off different frequencies of the charges in your body. Um, yeah, because when you walk by a, a, a batch of balloons, they'll all follow you. Anyway, um, <laughs> wow, that's pretty bad. Right. Um, but there's, I think there's scientific reasons. We're just now kind of they say to help wise too. Yeah, it's, it can be very healthy for you. Everything that's Right. Or it could be not so good for your body. So they're saying lots of things like eczema, skin rashes, different different types of acne, different things like that can come from the frequency of your food mm -hmm. and from the stuff you wash it in, fabric softener, right? So you know about that. Even the right? colors you wear. Even the color. Wow, oh, it's weird. Yeah, Mary, I don't know if the fabrics like linen are affordable here. We haven't been able to check that out. We don't really, I, we, have a, we don't have a sewing machine. We, have, we don't really buy fabric. We just, we came with our own clothes. We brought our own blankets. Now, the... My shirts are 100% cut. <laughs> the comforters that we bought when we were out here in Japan, they're, they're a little different. They're not like thick. Huge. Mass. But they do sell those, too. They do. The ones we bought just aren't like that. Yeah. They're different. I would compare it to, you know when you get a moving truck and you don't like it out of the back, but not as heavy and thick, like really light. <laughs> so 
It's been like literally done. Not wool, the ones that are like, no, I'm not Yeah, yeah. So like covers. Yeah. That's so funny. That's what those that are. That's exactly what it is. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God.
was from Yah. Okay. After he went his way, after he went through with it, he received the promises. I know we are his promise in a sense, but is this the example for stepping out of faith? It's scary to step out of our comfort zone. Can you share what we went through before they go? Before they go, I'm gonna, I, <laughs> right, right. you guys, I know I'm they're like chewing the bit. They're chewing the bit. I, for us, <laughs> for us personally, there's three things: desire, scripture, needs. I already went all over over all that. We did. Go ahead. Run. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'll walk past. How about that? Okay. I'll, 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 I'll power back. All right. So, walk it. By, by Abraham's example, um, Abraham had no scripture. He had to rely on whatever he thought he heard was from Yah. Right there. Um, I, I I love this question. It's a great question, but I have to completely completely disagree with that thought. Yeah. Um, Abraham walked with Yehovah. Mm -hmm. Abraham saw Yehovah Yeshua face to face the way I'm looking at my beautiful wife here now. Mm -hmm. He spoke with him. He got his instruction directly yeah. from the mouth of Yehovah Yeshua. I mean, as we read it in Genesis where, where three men came and talked to Abraham and he prepared meals for them and offered them to come in yeah, and yeah. sit with them yeah. and fed them. And then later on in that, that very next chapter, he's, he's standing and talking with Yehovah face to face. And he, he, not only that, but he bowed to one of them, and, and he, they re, he, re, he was, his bowing and his worship was received. And so we have multiple examples that Abraham literally spoke to Yehovah face to face, and he was given verbal instruction because it also says in Genesis that Abraham obeyed my charge. He, yes. he, he, it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he, that he believed, and he obeyed my commands, he obeyed my charge. He, he obeyed my precept, basically. So Abraham had Torah. Abraham had instruction. He it had might, it verbally. Yeah, yeah, it might not have been the, the tablets like Moshe had, but he he had the verbal instruction that was being given to him right before his eyes by the mouth of God, which to yeah. me, that's even more of the reason to because believe. He, and to, you know, to believe and to want to act on that. We Do we have that now? Unfortunately, we don't. So like you were saying earlier, the, the desire, the, the scripture, and then the means. Well, when he even understood, though, Avraham even understood the, the giving of the 10% uh, right. of, the, of exactly. the priestly tithing um, to Melchizedek, yeah. um, knowing because, and as the scripture says it, he did this even as the Levitical priest, since they all come from his loins, all right. from his posterity. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, so... Avraham knew that. He, he he had the Torah. He exactly. had the verbal version of it from Yehovah directly. Exactly. As like he said, like he's talking to his wife, or like we're talking to you right now. Yah spoke to people directly back then. There, there's just too many times. I mean, Jacob wrestled with him right. face to face, you know. Yeah. Moshe sat in the tabernacle with him face to face. And I mean, a slew of other right. times that we know that Yah spoke directly. Or even came in the physical and talked to people face to face. But the last thing I want to say about that is truth is truth is established. And every matter is established on two or three witnesses. And so when you're searching out scriptures, you have to at least have two or three witnesses that are confirming what you feel like Yah is telling you, yep. um, what you feel like you're being drawn to do. Confirm it in scripture always. Test it to scripture yep. always. Always. Also, yeah, never just step out because something sounds good. Right? Make sure that's Yah leading you. Make yeah, because sure the enemy comes as an angel of light. And the more and he, comes you, to, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And if he can steal you away from Yah by thinking Yah is speaking to you and leading you down some glorious path, He'll do it in a heartbeat, and I've seen it a million times. Yeah. Really trust and wait on him, and you'll know he's still small voice. You'll know through the word. You'll know through, uh, like they said, well, through key. witnesses. And you'll know because of the desire that he puts in your heart for staying close to him. But the number one key thing um, for all of us is the deeper our relationship gets with him, the more personal our relationship is, the more time we spend in the word, the more time we spend in prayer, the easier we come to know our shepherd's voice, the, the the greater and easier it is to know when Yah is talking to us and when it's Satan coming as an angel of light. Right. Is the more we spend in our walk with Him, and the like John says in the book of John, to be more of Him and less of me, and and the more that we work on that, 
then the closer we are to Yah, the more we become in tune with Yah. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. so yeah. And the way you pronounce it is Shema, Shema Yisrael. Shema is to hear and obey. So the name of our ministry is Hear, O Israel. And, and it's based on uh, is it Deuteronomy. The Shema, the, De the Shema is in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 6.4. Six, four. Six, four. I want to say 6. He's my Zakar. He's my Zakar. He, he remembers all, How the word, funny. all the words from me. I remember what it said. He remembers where, where it is. <laughs> Nobody so, ever really talks about the ZTs. Carrie Garcia just had a question. She just asked the very thing that we opened up everything with was the Zitzis. She said, in Numbers and Deuteronomy mentioned Zitzis, tassels. What's your take on this and do you wear them? What about women wearing them? Yes, yes, and it yes. Says to the children of Israel, the word is bene. Sometimes uh, the word ben is son in Hebrew. And it can also mean uh, when it's when it's uh, pluralized, it's bene. And that can be speaking to a son or a daughter or children in general. And so when it's speaking to the children of Israel, it's it's including all of us. So we all wear them. It's a personal um, thing between you and your creator to remember his commandments. So when we look down upon our, our garment, we see the tzitzit, we're to remember him. And it's important because remembering him is, there's, he did a whole teaching on remembering him. Amen. And it's it's extremely important to every every moment of every day to keep in the forefront of your mind and it's, 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 it's really basically to, re to remind you yeah, to it, remind yeah we're all supposed to wear yeah all of us it literally if it was for men just, only y'all would have said it's for men only they they just bought the undershirts with the zizi on them just because it's a lot easier it's called a katan and they got one for his five-year-old son and he sat there and he wove the zizi into the katan and it was really beautiful to watch and then his son came downstairs and like paraded around with like, look, look, because he sees the guys wearing these and he was so proud. And he understands. He, he yeah, knows why, he's so proud. why he's wearing them. So if somebody were to ask him, he'll tell you. To and, my, and my husband and I have sat and made zitzits for our daughters. We put them on over clips. Actually, I showed the zitzits here, just a few of, of ours, but we put them on little clips here you can see the clip to took to your skirt or whatever but yeah there's no special way of making it it's just a you're just supposed to put a blue thread in it you're gonna grab it this one yeah you're just supposed to put a blue thread in it um to set you apart and it's funny because they don't do the blue thread out here they just have the white if they don't believe it we can have the specific blue that's mentioned in scripture, <laughs> but it's just not, it's not true. You just have to put a blue thread. So, do you have anything to say? No, you're, you, and bread, that's great. Okay. Okay. okay, he's typing. So, I know Michelle showed you guys earlier these eight seats right here. Uh, this is what we were talking about earlier. The Tali Katan. Yeah, this there's there's different kinds you can get. This one's kind of like a sorry, like a net netted material, like almost like a jersey. Um, if you see, it's like see through because it gets really hot. <laughs> yeah. Wearing it, and so this here. is like for breathing. You know what I mean? So you don't get too hot. And then on the very bottom, there's special holes made just for the ZT. So you you uh, enter you enter it in that little hole there as you're making them. So that way, you know, you don't have to worry about them coming off or falling off or anything like that. Um, and this is a commandment, guys. This is this is important. I mean, in that verse, it literally says, so that you don't follow after the harlotry of your own heart. That's right. So that you don't forget and follow after, you know, the, the harlotry of wickedness. Think about it. You're, 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 you're getting into a sin, a sin that may require you to even take your clothes off if you've got to take your seat seats off. I'm serious. Wow. Like, wow. Yeah. No kidding. You yeah. have to remove. You have to remove your zitzit. My gosh. Remember that. Yeah. Yes. Remember him. Keep the yeah. zitzit on. Maybe it'll keep you from your harlotry. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, Anthony had a question. Um, what was the word that your wife used? I said, um, when he's, uh, he said, and I said, what was she referring to? 
Shema, oh, you need to buy them and sell them as a business? Oh, he's saying that, oh, the Shema. You mean the Zitzits? To buy and sell the Zitzits? Shema, I think, is what she, Shema is, is to hear and obey. Is that what you thought? Shema? To buy and to sell? Oh, no. somebody asked the name of our ministry and yes. it's pronouncing, so I pronounced Shema Israel. It means to it hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. And it doesn't mean to just to just listen, to hear it. It's to hear and to, obey. It's an action word. Yeah. It's a verb. And it's based off of Deuteronomy 6. It's based off of Deuteronomy 6.4. Where do you get one? There's Jewish stores. You can just Google a Jewish store. We'll probably sell they usually those. Have them, yeah. yeah, they won't have the, the seat seats. Um, you have to make your own seat seats. We should make a seat seat video. That's what you've been saying for three years. <laughs> well, then somebody else did it, and then I didn't nobody have to. did it. Yeah. No, and then she was she was going to do one for Sakoa. I didn't do it. I didn't go live. Like, right. Teach. Yeah, that's true. You did. Well, maybe we can make a video. <laughs> Somebody remind us. We keep saying, we'll do this, we'll do that. Right. We, need, we need an assistant. Where's Karen? Right. <laughs> I need Karen. <laughs> like Karen was my reminder, man. She always helped me. Uh, the net best thing. Yeah, you can just go Google any kind of Jewish store in your area, and they'll probably sell them. And if they don't, they'll tell you where to get them. So, and you can probably order it online, too. Just look up Katan. K-A-T-A-N, right? Yeah, K-A-T-A-N. K-A-T-A-N. Katan. Just Google it. It's 156. He's going to just roll over. Aw. Man, he's such a trooper. Robin, we, we really care about him, brother. Yeah, we do. I know, man. He, he'll be up at 3.30 in the morning to watch us when we were in America just so he could watch. He'd stay up all night. Yeah, you could just sew blue threads on your clothes. Uh, if you want to, yeah. I mean, put, I think, another color in there, red. You don't have to put another color. There's says, no, no, it just says, says blue. It says, says you have to have a blue thread. I mean, I don't say you have to have a blue Makes it look white or something, just so you can see the blue set apart. I don't know. I learned from YouTube, super fun. We learned when we first came into the truth, not from our first congregation, but our second one, that where we were actually learning truth. Um, they had a zitzi making class, and we learned. And then we looked up different other techniques oh, and experimenting. But it is fun. They are fun to make. We make zitzi boards where we put like a hook at the top, and we go down so far and put a nail, and it just helps hold it all while you're making it. So. <laughs> My husband is loving y'all. Very cool. Awesome. <laughs> Who? Uh, uh, Carrie Gar Garcia. That's awesome. It's very nice to have you guys. It's awesome. She said her husband likes us? Yeah. Do you tie them using numbers of Hebrew letters? Some people do. You don't have to. You can yeah. if you want to. There's no specific way. I, 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 did. I have before in the past, but I did not. I, I normally, I go 777. Seven, seven, <laughs> just because it's got... Sometimes I'll just do 24 for the 12 tribes and for the 12 disciples. Sometimes, yeah, I'll do... Yeah, I just do it differently, whatever I collect in the I like seven. I like seven. Like I'll wrap. I do wraps. I do like seven and tie a knot into seven. Or I'll do twelve for the twelve tribes. Or you know. But there's no there's no right. specific way. No yeah. one scripture does it say to do a specific right. way. Just. I would count it so it doesn't. Braid it, tie it, <laughs> in a knot. Keep it all. Keep it even. Whatever <laughs> you want. Whatever you'll you you'll need to tie a knot, or else it's gonna come undone. Yeah. So I mean. And that's kind of a given. Um, so you don't want it, you don't want your seeds to go with their well there. You can I'm just you can just tie knots with some string and, and safety to put it to the inside of all your pants and just leave it there. Wash them, dry them, and just leave it there. So if you wanted to. Yep. Yeah. All right. So are you are you at the beginning of the prayers? He's yeah. just coming to Torah and where's my seeds every prayer. day. That is so awesome. That is cool. I love that's that. Awesome. What? What, what, what? what he say? is just coming to Torah and wears my seats every day. Praise God. That's, that's awesome. That's so great. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's, yeah. that's wonderful. That is so cool. I love it. Man, I love hearing that, man. Right? It just touches my heart. You know, Scripture talks about that the angels rejoice. And, and you can't tell me that the angels ain't just rejoicing when stuff like that happens, you know? 
It's just so awesome. It's so itchy, man. I'm getting eaten alive. All right, guys. I hope you've typed in all your prayer requests. We are going to start praying. If you have anything, type it in quickly. We'll, we'll try and get to it. Um, we're going to pray, and then we will sing um, the ironic blessing over you guys, which is found in, in number, number six, six. verses 24 through 26. Yeah, we do so. I know. They're both six. I don't know why I do that. Do you have all the prayers? Yes. I'm mm -hmm. going to pray for you. Okay. Oh, you're praying tonight. tonight. Awesome. Angela is going to bless us with the prayer. Please. Oh, there. I there could. Oh, that's weird. Wait. Wait. Mm -hmm. Be quiet. Don't show you. Be so quiet. Be quiet. <laughs> What a great tour of talk time this has been. Went by too quick. I always <laughs> love I, I've I been loving all the tour talk quick. time since we got the land. Yeah. I mean, I've always loved them, but I don't know, man. It just, that's just, I don't know. It's amazing. All right. Well, I'm going to start prayer, and if you still have prayer, just type them in. So, <laughs> Abba, we just come before you, and first of all, we just thank you for your Shabbat, your day of rest. Thank you that all of us in our home felt your peace all day today, um, and we definitely felt the rest. We just thank you for being a good Abba. We thank you for this opportunity to sit here at this table and once again get in your word, learn, grow, and just be able to laugh and cry and smile all at the same time and i just thank you for um tour talk time and just bringing people from all over the world um, to come and join us we're just so grateful father for every single person that, that is um, joined us today and abba i just pray that you would hear our prayers um, that they would um, make it to your throne father and we just lift up tamara she has a prayer request for her daughter. She has decided she doesn't want to walk in the ways of Yah. I am heartbroken. Pray that she has her own experience with the Father. And for all of you, of our youth that are being drawn away into the world. Um, okay. Yes, Father, we just lift up Tamara and her daughter to you. Father, you, you see it all. And sometimes, as parents, we don't understand. And, um, we just pray, Father, right now that you would um, touch her daughter. Father, Tamara has shown her your way. She has shown her your word. She has shown her who you are. And, Father, um, sometimes um, it's hard because the world can get to our children. And there's so many other things around us that our children or even ourselves that are distractions and want to pull our children away from you father but we just pray right now in yeshua's name that you would wrap your arms around her father that you would keep her father and that she would remember you that she would remember everything that she has been shown in your word and and, and that tamara would be a light continue to be a light and continue to um pray and cover her daughter father and we just pray for all the youth that are being drawn away into the world. Father, you have seen our youth just sucked in, sucked into the world, sucked into the evilness and the, and the wickedness of the world. And so we just pray for all of us who have children, for all of us who, all the parents out there who have young daughters and young boys um, that are, are trying to understand who they are, trying to be, are becoming um, young, young adults and, and we just lift them up to you, Father. May you protect them. May you guard their hearts and their minds from this world. And Father, that they would turn to you and seek you and follow you and not look to the right or to the left. And Father, that our youth would stand up and rise up and become strong in your name, Father. So once again, we just lift up to more to you. Father, we lift up Carrie. Uh, Garcia for her son Joshua who is incarcerated having issue on his job. Um, yes, Father, we lift up 
and her son Joshua, Carrie's son, who is incarcerated, Father. Um, we just pray that you would be with him. We pray that you would protect him. And any issues, any sadness with his job or anything that you, you see it all, Father. You know what he's going through. So we just lift up Joshua to you, that you would be with him, Father. And once again, that your protection would be with him and you should with him. Father, we lift up uh, Glenda Newton, her, her prayer request. Um, she's sick with the stomach virus and her head is resting. It's been hard listening to you. So yes, Father, we just pray for Glenda. She's feeling sick, Father. She's got the stomach virus and her head is hurting and she's trying to She's trying to sit here with us and listen. Father, we just pray against anything from the enemy that is trying to keep her from um, sitting in with us and listening or feeling sick, Father. We, we ask in Yeshua's name that you completely heal her from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, Father. That you would take away this stomach virus and this, this headache or the, the, the head throbbing that she has going on, Father. We just pray complete healing for Glenn and you. Um, we lift, uh, Father, we lift up Linda Simpson. Um, she's asking for, for her son and her daughter's salvation. Yes, Father, we're going to continue to stand in prayer for Linda Simpson's son and her daughter's salvation. We just continue to pray for them. We continue to lift them up, Father. We just pray for their salvation. Father, that they would turn to you, that they would fall on their knees and surrender their lives completely to you. Only you, only you bring true salvation. Right. Okay. Um, yes, Father. Well, right now we lift up Linda Four and her and her son. Uh, she asked for prayer last week, and we're going to lift their family up again to you, specifically her son who was struggling. Um, um, when she was listening, he didn't want to hear. Um, he's got a lot of anger issues, so we just lift them up to you right now. You know their whole family situation, their living situation, and Father, as Linda's trying to be a light to her, to her family, you now she's really striving to seek you and serve you with all of her heart. And we just lift up her son to you, Father, that, to, that you would um, speak to him, that you would that he would cry out to you, and that you would remove any of the anger, Father, that he has in his heart. We lift up Mary LaFontaine and she asked for prayer, continued prayer for you all in the land for shalom, strength, and provisions, and for those there fearing man and said, Yehovah. Um, yes, Father, we just pray that you continue to give us the strength, continue to allow your peace to be with us, and continue as you have been from the beginning to provide every need, Father. Um, and for those fearing man, yes, Father, we lift up those that are in our neighborhood, those that are around the land of Israel who are afraid, who are in fear of what of man and what man is going to say and what man is going to do. And we just lift them up to you, Father. We pray that you would bring them out of the darkness into the light so that they can shine their light to this land because this land needs it, Father. Um, continuing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and for our brother um, Judah and those who need to see the light. Yes, we continue to pray for Jerusalem and for Judah, our brother Judah, and those father who who need to fall, who need to know you, who need to, to know your son. And so we just lift them up to you. May, may their eyes be open. May the veil be lifted from their eyes, Father. Um, continue prayers for the congregation in Colorado and for the service today, and for all the babes and the work to be ready as we continue to lift up our brothers and sisters, our family in Colorado, we pray that you continue to bless them, continue to be um, with Brother Robert and Brother James as they are um, being the mantle for us in Colorado. May you be with them, continue to guide them with them, and be with everyone today in their service, Father. And for all the babes and the work to be ready, yes, for everyone, to continue to strive and seek after you, that our face would be buried in your word, Father, that we would know your word, that it would be written on our hearts. Um, we pray for provisions and for 
and help for a brother and a sister dear to me in Kentucky who is with baby and in need of some home repairs and improvements to include a possible mold, uh, mold excuse me, et cetera, in their home. Yes, we just pray for um, Mary LaFontaine's sister, um, who is pregnant right now, Father, um, who is in need of things in our home. Um, and Father, just as she's going through this pregnancy and the possible mold that's in their home, Father, we just lift them up to you, we lift up their family, that you would be with them and, and with the sister who is pregnant, and that you would send people their way, Father, to help them, um, and that you would provide every need for their home repairs, and that you would remove um, all the mold if there is any. And we just pray protection over that home, Father, and that there would be no harm or anything when it comes to breathing um, and with and to be with her during this pregnancy. And we lift up Stephanie who asked for prayer for her children, Kyle and Buck and Ashley and Helena, Helena, sorry, to hear the Father and to wake up the truth. Yes, Father, um, I keep reading prayer requests about um, families who are asking for prayer for their children. We just, Father, we just lift all of our children to you. If they would be wrapped in you, Father, that the world wouldn't even have a chance to get to our children, Father. We just lift up Stephanie to you, Father, her children, Kyle and Buck and Ashley, and Marina, Father, that they would hear you and that they would wake up to your truth, that they would look to you and know that you are the truth, that there is no other truth in this world but you, Father, and that Stephanie would continue to be a light to her children every day, Father. Thank you. Lift up Linda Simpson. That our ministry receives a mini van. I love that she says our ministry. Yes, Father, that um, so many people standing in the gap with us and lifting us up in prayer. And Father, you know our need, and we trust that you're going to provide. And we stand on that and we speak that you're going to continue to provide this um, this family and this ministry with a van. And so we continue to pray for that, Father, that you would continue to provide um, and bless. This ministry as it's your ministry. Shane Stokes and Sarah Jones. Okay. Uh, we, yes, we looked up Shane Stokes and Sarah Jones. Father, and you know their whole situation. You know everything that they've been going through, um, Father. And so we just pray that you would be with them. We pray that you would comfort them. We pray that the situation with Shane Stokes and his family, that you would um, continue to bring the right people to him to work out the situation that's in front of him, and that he would trust and rely on you, and that he would cry out to you and know that you're going to make a way, even though right now it can seem like there's not a way out, Father, or there's no way this is going to work out, Father, that you would be with him, that you would comfort him and Sarah, Father, as they're going through the death and, and just everything that their their family is walking through father we just lift them up to you father we lift up um taylor and father so we lift up constance a 75 year old in our faith that joyce and i are caregivers for she's talking about joyce now um that she receives the father shalom while she's still on earth and, and please pray for our caregiving team led by her daughter, Shannon, who is also paying out of pocket for these expenses. Um, Father, we lift up um, Constance to you, Father, and we also lift up Taylor and Joyce who are taking care of Constance. Um, I couldn't imagine any other, any other people um, as we've got to know Joyce and we've got to see Taylor and Father to your dwellings um, to take care of someone like Constance who um, needs help, Father, and so we just pray for her. We lift up Constance to you, um, and Father, we just pray that while she's here, Father, while you have her here, that you would, um, that she would receive uh, your peace, Father, that you would allow Joyce and Taylor to be a light to her, to speak life over her, to be a light to her as, as they take care of her, and we also pray for um, the caregiving team led by her daughter, um, 
who's paying for all of these expenses. Father, we lift them up to you. We pray that you would provide um, all of these expenses, that all of these expenses and all the things that it takes into um, caring for someone on a daily basis. We just pray that you would provide for them, Father. We lift up their daughter, Shannon, to you. We lift up um, prayer for everyone who follows our ministry. Father, we are so blessed, so blessed. There are no words to describe all the people that we have got to know and gotten to bring into our family. And we just are thankful for them. Amen. All those who pray for us, all those who message us, all those who lift us up in prayer, and all those who bless our ministry financially in every other way, Father, that you know. And so we just pray for our family all over the world, that you would be with them, that you would meet their needs as they've met ours, that you would answer their prayers as, as they've prayed for us, Father, that you would be with them. Yes, that you would bless them double for it, Father. We just pray that you would be with them and their families, that you provide every every need, Father, and that you would um, continue to um, allow them to grow in your word, and Father, that they would continue to um, just strive after you, Father, so blessed and we just thank you for every single person that we've got to know and we lift this all of these prayers up to you father and we continue to pray for sandra for her son and his family that that anna would work in them in their lives and come to know him so yes that abba you would um we lift up sandra to you for her son thank and you. Lord, Yes, for for their son and his family, that Abba, you would work in their lives and, and that they would come to know you, Father. Yes, once again, we continue to lift up um, families who are asking prayer for their children, for their families, Father. Yes, we just lift them up to you. Continue to um, use Sandra and William as a light for them, Father, um, so that they can know you, so that they can turn to you, Father. So we just thank you, Abba, once again, because we're good because we are just so blessed to be able just to sit here and, and read your word and pray with everybody. Thank you that we are even allowed to do this. We are so blessed and we just pray that you um, heard every single prayer that was um, spoken tonight. Father, we just pray that you be with everyone as um, everyone's um, still in their Shabbat, Father. Um, we just pray that you bless everyone tonight. Um, we ask all of these things in the Amen. All right. Uh, awesome praise report in the middle of this prayer from Kathy Williams. I didn't see that. I went to my neighbor's garage sale and asked if he had heard of the Sabbath. He flipped up his shirt to reveal his zitzis. I shouted, zitzis! He was surprised that I knew what they were. I was surprised to see someone wearing them out in the foothills of Alberta. So we've been cool. friends ever since, and I've been invited to all their feasts. Hallelujah. Awesome. He works in mysterious ways. I love that. That's awesome. Great I love job. that. Congratulations. That's cool. You do. You shout things like that. You, you wouldn't think you would like when we were That's in certain awesome. places. So we'd cool. be like, Z -Z. You know, you know it's crazy things like that. Very cool. Uh, 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 that the father for Eli's successful surgery. Awesome. Oh, yeah. oh that was hallelujah. a great report. Very cool. Awesome. Amen. Love Amen. hearing the praise reports. We, we, need, yeah. we need to hear those. Yes, yes. It indeed. strengthens everybody within earshot or eyes or eyes of you. <laughs>
And it's first in Hebrew and then in English. Okay. Amen. Okay. And it's in Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. What do you say? <laughs> What's the clock? <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah, Okay. Hey. Hey.